I come from the discipline of geography. And what I did when I first began as a clear fellow in data curation is I decided to draw my job as a way for me to better understand what I was doing. And within this map, there's two basic concepts. One is that there's inwards and outwards motion. And I think it's important to remember that data always moves. And the second is I've hidden a Zen Cohen in here. First there's a mountain, then there's none, and then there is. And what I mean is that this is a very complex drawing. But we can take away this complexity and then rebuild it back up. Through this process, we should gain some understanding. So when I think about curation, I think about a fairly simple process that's been going on for a long time. Collecting, preparing and maintaining, building linkages, synthesis, and analysis. Much like the scientific process itself, all with the purpose of making the products from this reusable, publishable, or in some way disseminating it. This can be thought also as stewardship. Where the data comes from, I've abstracted into three categories. The existing library digital collections, the existing external data resources, and then the research data products that are produced by the research community on campus. To each of these, we can attach verbs as the data moves into what I call the curation space. And you'll notice that each share metadata creation or the description of the data. With these descriptions, we can build linkages between the data, take advantage of new semantic technologies, and hopefully make the data interoperable and thus add value to it and make it more reusable. When the data is inside the curation space, the library has lots of experience with storage, archival, preservation, and discovery. We need to be particularly careful about the formats that we're storing the data in, and the difference between preservation and conservation. Data may not be as valuable in 10 years as it is today. We have plenty of infrastructure in terms of hardware, software, and user interfaces that already exist. It is likely we're going to have to build upon this, but not reinvent it. As the data moves back out to be published or reused, we're going to have to be very careful about property rights. Is the data going to enter the public domain? Is it going to be open access? Will it be licensed? Are there intellectual property rights that we need to respect? And then, if we do this all correctly, we're going to end up with a sustainable system that's secure and adds value to our research data products. Once again, we have a mountain of complexity, but hopefully a little more understanding.